around the world. It's Mike from around the world. Mike, how you doing tonight? Pastor Paul, God bless you. How do I sound? Oh, man, you sound great tonight. Good. Oh, okay, good. We're in great. great, great. All right, Mike, we survived the eclipse. Yes, but, yeah, we did. But I heard, I heard the comet didn't. Um, what happened there? Yeah, it disintegrated. <laughs> the other, you know, you think they stopped naming things. Okay. What is wrong with them naming things? Uh, <laughs> you know, you don't name a comet that. Do you know, you th- of all things, that. <laughs> well, do you think because they named it the Devil's Comet that that was the reason it's gone? This thing came around every 71 years, Mike. Every yeah, now it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> don't, you don't, you know, don't give the devil his due. Be careful. So anyway, good point about it. Why would you name something the devil and you see what happens there? Terrible. Hey, you know what? Something interesting about that eclipse, the uh, line, the shadow of the eclipse, right? Yeah. Uh, it marked a real weather barrier. And right now are the effects that these storms that are forming went right up that line. Did you notice that? Yeah, I d- you know what I did? And I thought that's man, I don't want I, I, that. Maybe that's just a coincidence. But are you saying there's something to this? Well, I believe that, that eclipse was set at the dawn of time. Yes, right? yes, yes. That's one of the Lord's uh, one of the Lord's deals. And if you do what was being discussed in Washington, you would say, yep, that's our father. Um, okay. I, well, I, what's being discussed in Washington right now? There? Well, you, first of all, you have a lot of uh, you got a lot of hatred towards the Jews, right? Yeah, yeah. And they can say what they want to say publicly, but but, but these some of those guys are vicious uh, behind closed doors. They are they are extremely vicious, and um, you know the Jews. People have their idea of the Jews. God blinded the Jews on purpose so that the gospel could go all around the world. And he'll open their eyes when he gets ready. But um, all those who continue to curse them are cursed themselves. Mm. And uh, they continue to do that. Yeah, they do. And they, Well, and one, they don't either don't know or two, they know and they don't care or they don't believe. Uh, and, and there's so much hatred toward the Jewish people. Plus, Yeah, they, they have a hatred, and a deep hatred. It's a deep hatred. And they believed a lot of this propaganda. And I'm, I'm not even talking about the lately propaganda but i'm talking about propaganda going back all the way back to you know to uh, uh pike uh and and, and, be, and go back to hitler and nazis and just keep on going back and back and back there's been a lot of stuff written anti-semitic and hatred and it's the devil really isn't it yeah i'll tell you something when you uh when you uh when a person hates when they have hatred in them right they use everything as an excuse bolster that hatred but when you have a person who does not have hatred it doesn't matter what they read you you cannot tempt a person to hate anybody who has no hate in them and so in this case you have a lot of people it's just being drawn out of them they already hated um israel and the jews right they already hated that they just needed an excuse to bring that forward and if you think about a lot of things that's exactly how it happens you know, people bolster the hatred that's already exists within people. Mike, you're talking about the Jews in Israel. We, we, we have to talk about Iran, I think. I mean, oh, yeah. Iran, yeah. the plan attack, no doubt. Um, Israel, right now, I'm understanding, and you may have more, I'm sure you do, more updated. But the top U.S. commander of CENTCOM, uh, General Corella, is in Israel. They're, they're meeting 20 stories down in the earth at the major command center. He's probably got the war cabinet in there along with probably, well, I do know that defense ministers, Galliant's in there and maybe Netanyahu. Are they planning with Israel how to uh, put defense strategies together or are they planning pro- be to be proactive ahead of an Iranian strike? They have to, they have to do both. Um, first of all, Iran made a uh, comment they haven't made ever, right? They said we will directly hit you, right? Yes. They want to directly strike Israel. Yes. They've never used that language. Iran has had many threats against Israel, right? Uh, many yeah. threats. They they called Benjamin Netanyahu a gangster. They said it would be removed. What's different this time is that their entire country has been put on alert, yes. right? Yes. Iran. People are actually being being shuffled around they know that people went to hardened structures 
yesterday. And they have a, there's lots of, we, you know, we can, the U.S. can see everything. So Sally confirms uh, preparations over there. Um, Israel has to do the same. They have to, right? They also have to have it offensive. Um, Iran promised that this would not be, he would not be an all, you know, engulfing war with the surrounding region. In fact, this morning they were talking to Saudi Arabia, they were talking to Turkey, they were talking to all these different, this, that was this morning. And so you know something is afoot, but here's what's disturbing. Okay. Over here in the USA, now they put out a report because there is a somewhat of a gag order. They don't want people in the USA getting upset. There's been a story of a person who has ties to ISIS that was found at the border, right? Now, that's just one one person out of, we talk about that all the okay, time. Okay, okay. But there can, they, there's, a, there's a gag border. They can't come out and just openly say anything they want to about that border anymore. Now, the, the, the reason they did that is because they explained to the people that story. Anybody who reads that story, they're going to read that there was a breakdown between the FBI and, and the uh, border guards, right? Okay. The, uh, so that was a breakdown, right? The, the FBI was not communicating with those at the border. This was one incident. Now, we know we probably have 400,000 over here in the USA. <sighs> okay, but at least. That's at minimal. And that's probably, you know, in the last, uh, I'd say in the last eight or nine months. So Are now you, can- you take that number back even further. Okay. Right. Take it back even further, because they're they're. I believe that they're 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 good people in the news agency who try to get around gag orders, and uh, they're trying to let people know we have a serious problem. They're not going to hit Israel and leave us untouched, right? So there's um, Sincom, for example, Sincom. Um, they, they that's intelligence operations, logistics, all that kind of stuff. But but they're also tied. Um, to the vanguard of cyber defense, right? They've been very active, Pastor Paul. So they they not only expect an attack on Israel, but they expect interruptions in our infrastructure. Okay. Okay, so people over here should also expect uh, bad cyber attacks. So you're the saying... Way it was, the way it was said, they said bad cyber attacks. They've never said a bad side all cyber attacks are bad why would this be bad why would they well, use that, that language means, so, it uh, means they're going to do something beyond the pale they've been probing and probing and probing and see what they can get away with but they must be going to try to do something very serious yeah unfortunately with uh, uh, cyber tactics a person can accumulate all they need and sit on that you know for years um and then you know push the button, so to speak, when they need to. So they already know that at least 50% of American computers are compromised. They already know that. And what they'll end up doing is using um, standard computers against the infrastructure. Right? They're not going to do it totally externally, which is why Microsoft and Apple and all these guys are, are working at breakneck speed getting all the updates. And a lot of people, they don't like getting the updates, right? Their systems are, are probably 100% compromised. Mm. They just won't know it yet. Mm-hmm. Iran does not want their identification or any of that. They want to use their computer to attack the USA. Wow. So they want, because they want to be clear that they did it. You believe that that's it, that, that this is time for them. They've been hiding behind the proxies, even in their cyber attacks. They've, they've been hiding, and, and they've got the Russians helping them. I mean, let's face it, the Russians are pretty good at these attacks. These They're cyber. very good. Yeah. <laughs> so is a strategy going on right now for World War Three? You bet. You bet. They know it's coming. They know it cannot be held back. Um, right now it was described that in the Middle East, there's already a large scale war at, at, uh, underway, right? Uh, people can deny that all day, but the truth is, when you talk about lives lost from all countries, uh, equipment, uh, you know, you, to finance this war, there is already a large scale war taking place. Now, as far beyond Israel and Hamas, um, we have to move, you know, every time something like this happens, that's billions of dollars in fuel that's going to be spent. Right. Right. Aircraft carriers are fueling up. Planes have to be ready for a quick response in theater. Uh, this, that, and the other. And um, that's everybody. Even China 
is preparing themselves for this one. China has warned their people about this one yeah. since uh, this Iranian threat. So, you know, China is always on the verge uh, of some sort of issue with their own people. Uh, but, um, yeah, this is this is uh, this is different. Well, and I've got re- you know, I, OK, so I've got some information and you can verify or you don't have to or maybe you could tell me more. Uh, I, I understand the sixth fleet is there. It's pretty well in position. The fifth fleet is on its way. And even the Dwight D. Eisenhower now is, is, is racing toward the region. So you think this is all preventative? And or is there more than this? This is a lot of money to bring this much uh, naval power into the area. Well, they have a lot there already, right? Okay. But they also have to have air coverage. If they, if they attack Iran, is a hardened uh, place, right? Nobody has ever really directly hit Iran and just, you know, walked away without wounds. Um, if they actually hit Iran, past Paul, here's what's at stake. Okay. If they, they have to retaliate against Iran helping Israel out, right? If, first of all, if Iran attacks Israel, all Western countries are on the list. They cannot hit Israel, you know, just Israel. They can't do that. They already know they're going to have to overwhelm or hit the USA. That's going to bring us into a regional war. If anybody ever attacks Iran, the, the Middle East is going to split back to its faith-based cultures, which yeah. means all these other nations have already stated that if they ever get into a large regional war, right, they're going to side with the Islamic world against the Western world, period. Yeah. This is what they're really trying to yeah. avoid. Right. Yep. And it looks like it's almost unavoidable. If that happens, uh, they know that uh, forces from all over the Middle East will go in and take Israel. Mm-hmm. And that's already been on the table. They mm-hmm. found this out with intelligence. Um, so forget about the U.N. having Jerusalem on the chopping block right now. If this happens, they will take Israel. They will go in there and take it, right? Be a coalition of people. They go just go in there and take You're it. You talking the UN? You mean the UN will will rally? Some... No, not the UN. We're talking about the entire Islamic world. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, they have been past the communication between these countries has been incredibly high, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, this is why Iran is talking about direct strikes against Israel. Now they they will only say that if they have support of other nations, right? Yeah. Saudi Arabia has been talking to Iran. They're, I don't like Saudi Arabia. You guys know that. Saudi yeah. Arabia, Jordan, they're all in a bad you, book You don't for me. care much for Jordan either. Yeah, I was going to say. No, because these guys, when it comes down to it, they're not Christian nations. Yeah. Right? And what, they'll, what they're going to do is they're going to side uh, with, their, with their culture base. Right. Right? right. Which is the same as Iran. And Iran will execute every single Christian in that in, in, in country when this happens. Oh. So it's, it will turn into a bloodbath You're when saying this takes place. When this, gets, when this blows sky high, they'll just start executing Christians in Iran? Yes, they will. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. It's a well, holy it, war. It's a holy war. Yes, they, yeah, that's right. That's right. See, that's, that's what's at stake, and they know this. This is not some usual situation. This is, uh, this is, this involves everybody. So everybody has to come to the table in this and get some things resolved quick. Because when this, you know, for, for Iran to have that language, that means they have support. They, you only use, they only use that language when they have other nations supporting them. I see. I see. Them. Yeah. Then they so, get, they feel emboldened then because they got, they that's got, right. That's right. All right. Now with this going on, um, and the United States moving all this military uh, Navy uh, support in there. Um, there's a lot of money involved just to maneuver, just to s- deploy, just to, you know, as you said earlier. Um, but we're looking here at a situation. When, it, when Iran took out that facility that's supposed to have been a consulate, and they killed the three leading generals and four officers, major officers, of Iran, you know that was a bold move for them to do that. Uh, is it because they're they're playing the game already? Have they that was their first chess move, and they're looking to make another one, and they're watching for they want a response. I mean, what does this mean? This I mean, they're fighting Hamas. They got Hezbollah sitting up there with thousands of rockets. They, you know, 
why would you go and smack them? I, I understand Iran's the one running the war, and there's no question that Iran's doing the war. But uh, this, you, you had to have known there would be a response. Did they want this? Benjamin Netanyahu knows of a greater threat dealing with Iran than the world is, has uh, courage enough to admit. So he's not going to rest until Iran is totally subdued. Iran is the number one threat to Israel. Everything that's been happening to Israel, right, has been authored by Iran. All the, um, the all these attacks are are proxies of Iran, right? So they pay them to do that. So long as Iran is in power the way it is, Israel will never have peace. Nobody knows that. He can fight Hamas and Hezbollah and the Houthis all day. That's not going to do the. That's not going to do anything. You have to go right for the snake's head, right? And so they're going to do that. That's where Benjamin Netanyahu's mind is. Unfortunately, right? If the world were behind him. He could, he could, he could certainly succeed. Here's the issue, though: it's going to look bad to do that, right? And because it's going to look bad, he's not going to get the international support needed. About that, right? Although any other country out there would do the exact same thing if they knew what was at stake. Yeah. Uh, but they're not. And we all know how it's going to end up, right? Which is the Bible, the Bible's your anchor and it's my anchor too. And we know how things will end up. So having that in mind, uh, we know, we already know what the end result will be. We already know that. Uh, but unfortunately, Benjamin Netanyahu is not going to stop until he protects his people. And believe it or not, believe it or not, if, if, if right now, if Israel stopped everything they were doing, right? Uh, the Houthis and Hezbollah would have wiped Israel out. They would attempt to wipe them out. The UN would seize uh, Jerusalem, essentially. They would be disarmed, and they would be wiped out, and they would no longer be a people. That's what would happen. And, uh, you know, people around the world, they know this. Leaders know this. They're, they're trying to sell a different idea to the, to the people, to the populace, so that the populace is behind whatever plan they dream up Need I remind everybody, just look at the honesty record of the UN. Look at the honesty record of all this rhetoric that's been happening for years. They haven't accomplished not one thing they said they were going to accomplish, right? Dealing right. with Israel, that's nothing right. has been accomplished. No. And so they don't have a very good track record concerning that. That's one of the reasons Russia was so upset with the UN, because he knows what they're trying to do to him. Yeah. It's essentially, past balls, essentially, you, you have a force that has grown, right? And this force wants control of resources all yes. over the world, yes. right? So it wants to manage everybody's resources. Uh, is, is, is the, you know, at the beginning of time, most mankind, all their hunting and gathering skill sets, all that stuff for 50,000 years was to gather food, right? Yes. Rome comes along, they build a, they, they gave the world how to produce how to distribute and how to manage food on a large scale. Then we get the industrial age and, um, you know, we're blessed to go to a grocery store, but what's happening is with these breakdowns like this, right? Food is becoming scarce in certain places again. Well, that's going to cause that's causing a bit of hostilities. People are nervous about resources and when they get nervous about resources, it's going to begin to upset the uh, balance of power. And this is what they're fighting over now because they know what happens. If one country goes hungry, it's over. It's, yeah. it's done for. That will escalate. And once it escalates, they're going to fight over resources yet again, as they have before. And when that happens, disease breaks out. When that happens, one nation, you know, goes over, goes and attacks another for food. Whatever nation wins has to end up feeding the world. And everybody starves in the first place. And so they know what's about to happen. It's this revolving cycle we can't escape from. It just so happens, you know, biblically, we can see what the blueprints are. Uh, for right. these times coming out so here we are here we in are. this time and it's it's happening quick we really are we really are mike uh also the red heifer uh <laughs> there's 11 days to passover and i can tell you they want to uh sacrifice and burn the ashes of the red heifer between now and passover really they would love to do it passover day but is part i mean look face it then the 
Hamas said the reason they attacked Israel on October 7th was these 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 red heifers and the potential that this ceremony was going to happen. If you is there any intel or any information you have that uh, on the situation with the red heifers and and its relationship to the rest of the Islamic world? Well, it, it, that's a that's a tight lipped type thing which has protection within itself. Believe it or not. Um, the elements of the temple that they have, right, um, believe it or not, are being highly protected. And the Mossad is doing a, a pretty good job at, at uh, uh, sealing the families because there are families in charge of this. Yes. But, Pastor, they have, they have selected everything. Everything is selected. Everything is selected. And, and uh, once they get a property dispute out of the way, right? Uh, because everything has to be pointing in the right direction. Certain lands have to be uh, christened, so to speak, blessed, so to speak. Uh, certain things have to take place. They're ready to do that. I believe they're going to start moving forward with it uh, because they have they have a tight protection they never had before. I, nobody can say anything too much about that, but I believe, believe they're going to go forward with it. Whether we're in war or not, whether we have peace or not, they're going to go forward with, um, with the ceremony, with, with, uh, with some of the major things of that temple. They're going to go forward with it. Yeah. They're going to do it. They're not playing. And if it's one thing I respect, I highly respect and, and, and people should really understand this. The Jews right now as a whole, the Jewish community right god blinded them for the yes. sake of the gentiles for us yes but you look at the dedication of the jews right just just god blinded them so that means they can't really acknowledge the messiah right, right now but right pastor look at their devotion Unbelievable. look at the steadfastness can you imagine who they would be if they identified the messiah Messiah already, my uh, Lord, uh, this world will be totally subdued. Um, yeah. uh, well, just like God said, when their eyes are open again, yep, uh, there's a reestablishment of the kingdom period. But their devotion, even in the face of of world global opposition, right, uh, of threats, of real death, they still go forward by way of their heritage, by way of the word they have. They honor the word they have. It's an amazing thing, but. Uh, they are they, when it, when when you're dealing with the temple, they're going to do in the absence of, you know. Of course, they have a blindness, but they're going forward with their last instructions given by the Almighty. All right? Any one of us would do the same thing if we could not see. If God blinds you, you can't see certain things. You can't accept, and so you have to go forward with what you have. And that's precisely what they're going to do. Precise, and God already knows they're going to do it. And it's you know, there are certain things that have been put in place, and the Lord has His reasons. But um, they have everything. I mean, everything, including, including the. Uh, there are some American companies on standby. Now that just happened this year. That really? wasn't last year. Yeah, well, there are some American on companies sta on, on standby, standby so. for. That's for construction, okay. uh, for security for and protection. Yeah. yeah, for the temple, big time, just for the temple. Yeah. You're talking about a lot of coordination, a lot of money. Here, Here's the deal, though. The equipment has already been shipped overseas. Wow. They already did that. They've been doing that since January, I believe. And so, yeah, so things really start going that direction. And if the Middle East has, if they have, um, if they're aware of this, I have to put it this way, if they are aware of this, then the Middle East being devoted to the Islamic faith is going to do everything they can to stop it. Yeah. And they're yeah. aware of it. That's why yeah. I'm telling you they're yeah. aware of it. Yeah. Uh, wow. All right. Well, let's, t let's talk about something. The sun. We did talk about the, 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 the comet dying, but this, the sun this morning had another major solar flare. It was an M class 5.4. Um, so we're going to get some CME uh, again. We're going to get more pressure on the Earth. Um, the sun is very volatile, and, you know, we've talked about it several times. Um, is Planet X or this, this binary system seemingly is causing the sun to really be active? Uh, your, your thoughts on and, – and Mount Etna is shooting off smoke rings, which is kind of wild. 
Well, what is your thought about this? These, 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 we seem to be seeing, a, definitely we've seen an uptick in the last two months of solar flares. M classes, X classes. I mean, we've definitely seen it. Well, I hope that people have been paying attention because, first of all, we're quickly approaching the days, the, the weeks, I guess you could say, of some uh, severe problems. For example, the sun, its solar cycle, uh, it was supposed to peak in 2025. Yes. It's going to peak in 2024. Uh, it's going to do a double peak. Actually, and then it's going to go through its uh, um, its pole flip, right? Whoa! And it's doing all all this is happening prematurely, so it's Uh-oh. not happening in twenty twenty. Did you hear me say that that's 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 going to be our webinar? Our webinar for next month, late late May, is pole shift. Okay, pole shift uh, p- slash p- planet X. So you're saying that the the Earth's going to do a pole shift, or are you saying the Sun's going to do a pole shift? The Sun. The sun, the what sun is, is going to do it do? very. Uh, uh, well, it's going to change its its. It's kind of like changing the polarity of a battery, right? Um, all they, all females, all biology is going to be affected by this, especially women. Uh, okay. But here's the problem: we're going through a double peak. Twenty twenty four is different than any other cycle we've ever been through. Okay. This is going to be hard to explain, so I'm not going to spend time because people will not understand this, especially those who love science, right? In science, everybody believes that the sun is this big reactor, correct? It's a huge reactor just outputting, you know, energy, endless energy. That's what everybody believes. But there's something a bit different. Um, And it threw me off too when I first, you know, learned of this, but... The sun is actually processing energy it's receiving, and it's been doing that for a long time. In fact, all stars are doing it, right? They're processing energy, and they distribute that energy to everything else. So the sun receives a type of energy, and then it processes that energy, which is diffused back out to the planets and everything else. And, of course, the planets do the same thing. They take the energy from the sun, and they diffuse it to life into the atmosphere and everything else. Um, the energy that the sun is receiving is soon to double. I mean, double, like too much, too much power, right? Which which happens from time, like like having a um, battery that puts out too much voltage yeah. uh, in some type circuit, everything is going to heat up. And so the sun is about to go through some changes nobody has ever observed before. No, nobody. No scientists know anything. Um, so anyway, that's that subject. So it's certainly going to have some changes. The sunspots are destined to increase. They're going to be up to account probably. Uh, normally, the sunspots are in the around the 100 mark, right? Imagine 250 sunspots on the sun. No, no, that's not good. So just imagine that. They've already been gravitating towards poles to the center, to the equator of the sun, which is what they normally do. But that many sunspots is outrageous. That will be a telltale sign that some external energy is severely affecting it. Now, they know what that external energy is. They know what it is. Um, they know exactly what it is. They, they know exactly what it is. It, but it can't be discussed and why is because it, it flies in the face of what most people understand. Most people believe in Darwinism. Yeah. Most people believe in the <laughs> Big Bang. Right. And every time you hear of a science paper that came forward uh, telling everybody that the the all these uh, systems are coming close together, they're not separating. They're coming close together. Right when they run the real numbers, all these galaxies and everything else are not getting further apart. They're coming closer together. They end up, you know, sanitizing those published papers, and so things are a bit different. Well, they're very different than what most people can comprehend. People are taught for safety reasons. People are taught so they can have open optimism in science. Right? Okay. Not, not all. I'm not saying science is a lie. It's just that certain theories. Or blatant lie, and um, they do this so people have a comfort in it, so they'll keep it, and it works. 
unfortunately, we've hit a time when all of us going to start to break down. It's not going to make sense, and people are going to be very confused. As the sun changes, our atmosphere is going to change, right? The water is on the way already. It's on the way already. What water? Uh, what, 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 what are you, what, well, are you serious? What, what? You know what, back, back in 2015, I had a double ADL. A lot of people remember I was keeping track of atmospheric potential to hold moisture. I used to talk about that a lot, right? Okay. Nobody else was talking about that. And uh, now a lot of people are going to start hearing about that. They're going to start hearing about it because they cannot hide it. They only talk about things when they cannot hide it. Are you right? talking about atmospheric rivers? I mean, the, the moisture in the Well, air. that's included. That's included in it. But it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, I named it or coined it a double ADL factor, right? And so the atmosphere right now has potential to hold, I, I believe, five and a half times more moisture than it ever has before. So where it would hold, you know, say like um, 219 tons in the in a, in a cloud and a cumulonimbus in a storm, uh, you're looking at a factor, you know, well above that now. So it can actually flood an entire city. You know, a storm can flood an entire city. Pennsylvania, uh, I believe tonight they announced a new category of flood warning, right? And it's a catastrophic warning is what it is, uh, which means the rains are, that are about to fall are about to drop a foot of rain in one area. Uh, so that's since, no, if it does that in Pennsylvania, term. if it does that in the Appalachian Mountains of Pennsylvania, we're going to have flash flooding like they've never seen before. Well, the potential's there, and, and the, the floods are real, right? The, here's the issue. They've already observed that in Texas. So they saw it in Texas twice, and it was it was isolated. So this new terminology is dealing with some of the new factors they had to factor in uh, to some of the uh, uh, terms that meteorologists use. Because they're going to be, instead of a flood warning or flood watch, People are going to see something else. And what that means is, that means that whole place, like if, if somebody is under a catastrophic uh, flood warning, right? What that yeah. means is that there is no maybe. That means the town is about to be lost, which means federal funding is going to have to be called in for this. That means um, life is going to be lost, too. And so FEMA gets, uh, they get ready, right? right. Uh, Pennsylvania has one of those watches for a small town right now. Or, or warning right For now, tonight. catastrophic. So people have to leave. They have to get out of there. Some people are stranded. Flooding. Some people right now are stranded because of eight inches of rain that fell in less than uh, less than an hour. And so they, they can't go anywhere. They're stranded. Um, th there are problems right now with these storms that are happening. This is only the first round. These storms are going to get a lot worse, a whole lot worse. So Texas, they're not done with the storms. Louisiana, all those places are not with the storms. Mississippi. The water is on the way. It's on the way. And the, and the uh, atmosphere cold. Too now, much water. Let me ask you. They're saying this is not a Nino, El Nino year. And I saw where the, the, uh, the Weather Channel last week made a major announcement that this was going to be the worst conditions for hurricanes and cyclones and typhoons in because the history of the, of the world. Are they, is it because of, uh, they did say the ocean temperatures are warmer. So is it this water holding up in the atmosphere? Is this what's causing it? You, the atmosphere is changing. It's not the same. It's not what it used to be last year. It's not. The, the ocean temperatures are driving, right? So something is driving the uh, processes of the earth. In turn, the oceans are heating up from underwater volcanic activity, right? Okay. Um, I mean, yep. they're really hot. That's causing more water to evaporate, right? Because we have atmospheric compression, which means a cumulonimbus does not have to be as high as it used to be to hold that much water. So everything is compressed and densities are much higher than normal. Um, the atmosphere can hold a whole lot more water, right? So the average storm can drop five times more water than it used to. There are microbursts. Texas had 12 microbursts yesterday what's a microburst right, 12 what? a microburst is is what pilots hate right a microburst is when water all of a sudden water comes down on the ground it's enough water to take the oxygen out of the air it, it's almost like somebody dumping a bucket of water on you okay the air pressure coming down is extreme right you're looking at um 
possibly, I believe they said they had 78 mile an hour winds blowing straight down. Right? You hardly ever hear that. <laughs> no, that's a microburst. No, no, no. Yeah, that's so, a microburst. Wait, it's not water. It's a microburst of air? No, it's the water. It's a storm. A microburst is a storm that all of a sudden it releases everything. 78 wind, miles an it hour. It releases wind. It releases hail. Wow. It releases uh, rain. Yeah. And it's all going straight down. Um, this is what pilots hate, you know, because if that ever hits an airport, it's going to do damage. You know, pilots have to avoid that stuff. Yeah. Um, that can bring a pr- plane out of the air. If microburst happens over an aircraft, that aircraft is going straight to the ground, right? They're going to lose altitude and that's going to be the end of that. And so it just decimates anything below it. Well, they had 12, right? So when you start having these type phenomena, you know that the atmosphere, atmosphere conditions have altered and they're not going back to normal. They're getting worse and the water is going to be a lot hotter this year than it was last year. Right. Uh, so these storms. these storms are going to be outrageous. Okay. Okay. So we have this. We have atmospheric compression. We have uh, atmospheric rivers. We have way more water. Uh, we have straight line winds that are way more faster and stronger. More hail that are a lot bigger. Where the sun is way more active and it's a year ahead of time. And what about the meteors? What about the meteors? You know, you've talked about. We're still on track. We're, we can't avoid that. Is it for May? Point. Is it this year? Is it going to be coming starting in May, June, or what? We'll have this. We we're starting to have sprinkles. Meaning, right? There is an actual uptick in the reports of people who have damaged property by these things. That's that's always yeah. on the rise. But we're about to hit the point where it will actually cause fires all over the place. So we'll have atmospheric breaches due to the composition of these things, right? But keep this in mind. You're looking at rocks coming inbound to this planet. If one, if we had an incident in space that scared people to pieces, right? Okay. Uh, It scared the public. Um, The space command knew about it. Air Force command knew about it. But they, when you have satellites that can potentially collide because they're old. Right. They just told everybody this could cause a catastrophic effect on the surface of the planet. So what happens when a cluster of rocks comes in and it's going to hit those satellites? It's going to hit the surface of the earth, but they're also going to hit the satellites. Yeah, they will. Think of what's going to happen. Then that means the stars of, it's going to look like stars of heaven falling to the earth. The Bible says that's going to happen. It says it's going to be like a fig tree casting its untimely figs when it's shaking with a mighty wind. And, and we put the objects up there. Yeah. Matter of right? fact, t- t- I think I did a video today. Was it today where they announced that Russia, a Russian satellite just barely missed a, a, a NASA satellite. It, it missed it by 30 feet. You know how close that is? 30 feet. They said had they hit, it would have exploded both of them and shards of metal, small shards of metal will come racing onto the earth like bullets at over 48,000 miles an hour, like bullets, pieces of metal, which obviously if they hit somebody, it's going to kill them. You know, it's going to do some, you know, and I'm thinking. That's right. That's right. So you're saying the meteors that's coming, there's no escaping them. And they're even, right. it's even going to be worse as we got satellites floating around over our heads. That's right. It's a double right. whammy. They just, they just told you that if the two satellites collided, what, what damage they could cause, right? Now they know full well. At the altitude those things are, if they would have collided, they would have taken 20 others with them. I 20 know. or 30. It would have been a cascading event, right? So the surface of the earth would have been in trouble. Now think, think of a, of a day or two of meteorites coming into our, you know, right, hitting everything in the atmosphere or anything they can. Some of those satellites are not going to survive. You cannot maneuver those satellites out of the way of those sporadic projectiles, right? You can't yeah, do you that. can't do it. We don't have and, technology. Um, no. So that's going to be bad. Plus, again, with all the mapping they have done of near-Earth asteroids and everything else, right, if you want to know what that constitutes, then all you have to do is walk outside and put your hand up, right, at arm's length and put one finger up. That finger covers a portion of the sky. That's the near Earth. Ast- that's everything they have mapped so far, and all the rest is not mapped. What? No, wait a minute. Are you serious? I mean, 
I'm serious. So, well, that's nothing. That's like nothing. That's nothing. That's that's all of the money they spent. All of what they're doing. All you have to do is hold your hold your arm up all the way up and put your finger up. And what your finger covers is the area of the sky they have mapped. The rest is unmapped. And they're walking around with confidence like nothing can happen. That's why they're building underground. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. This is why and it is it's coming. Yeah. You know, that's why they're building these massive underground complexes and cities. Because they already know, Pastor Paul. Yeah. They already know there's no way that there's just no way they can find everything that's gonna kill us. There's no way. So this is why they're gonna prepare to save the human race in their mind. In their mind. They're gonna they're gonna survive the apocalypse by bringing the best, the brightest, the most gifted, the most invited, the most connected. We'll get to go down underground and the rest of us will be up here. See how it shakes out. That's right. Well and you you know what? Everybody keeps mentioning one name. If they mention one name, they have the the affiliation wrong. This one name of one president, right? That's his responsibility. He's in charge of the lottery for who goes down there and who does not. Well, who, do we they know? think he's doing something else. Oh, yeah. They think he's doing he is doing nothing on the top side of this uh, planet. Obama? Let's put it that Ob- way. Obama? Nothing on the top side of this oh, planet. Oh, no, the drama. He does Obama, n- he has n- listen, Obama. Li- listen, though, he has nothing to do with anything on the top side of this planet. No. See, here's something people ought to understand right now. You're dealing with, uh, you're dealing with uh, uh, well, you might as well call it a breakaway civilization, right? Well, that's what And what's is, left yeah. over. What's left over is on the surface of the earth and everything it entails and everybody it entails. There's a whole different gang, right, that has nothing to do with the economics, nothing to do with anything on the top side of this planet. I'm telling you that right now. It is separate. It is split. And it will never be put back together. So when Jesus said these words, we're going to Revelation, sixth chapter of Revelation, and the Bible says in verse 12, And I beheld when he opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree cast as her untimely figs when she's shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it's rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men, the rich men, the chief captains, the mighty men, Ever bondman and ever free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come and who shall be able to stand? They're preparing for that day. Am I right? That's the day they're trying to survive? Is that the day? Oh, absolutely, because the day of his wrath includes everything they're frightened of. Right. Everything. But but make no mistake. I'll, I'll say it again. Those folks broke away some time ago. They, they broke away. They have nothing to do with what's left. Whatever's on the surface is the leftovers. It's it's. it's Everybody for himself. It is left. So over. you're saying already there's there's massive distribution of food and water and medical medical supplies and everything. Leadership. Leadership. Everything. That's why we it's, got these it's clowns. It's already split. Is that why? Thank we... you. But now now you'll understand everything a little better because everything on the top is leftovers. It's leftovers. I mean, yeah. Everything Bi- on Biden top is leftovers. And Harris and Pelosi everything and on Schumer top is leftovers. And, I mean, it's, it's anybody you see show. up top. Anybody you see up top, they're leftovers. They will not be going down. They're leftovers. I'm glad I'm going up. I'm... <laughs> and, right, right, right. When they're, when they're, you remember when uh, uh, when uh, Barack Obama and Michelle Obama said, "When they go low, we go high." Or no, when they you, go, yeah, you know, it's the it's the opposite. When you go low, we go high. Okay. <laughs> well, see that. Uh, yeah, they don't know. They don't know about a creator. Christians, no. All Christians have to remember is this: the Father created the earth, right? Everything that happens in this earth is for our deliverance. All of this is a process for us. So anything 
God does is for us. Recognize the creator. They want to be their own creators. So, of course, they're going to hide, run, go tuck their legs and everything else, but but they've split away. Um, we'll be liberated. They will not. They already know it. They know yeah, it. Okay. So we, we, we see what we got to do is we get some of that. Now we're coming down to this. We got to prepare ourselves for such a time as this. Uh, no doubt about that. You know, this is day 777 of the war with Russia and Ukraine. Is there end in, Is there any end in sight in this? I fear not. No, no end. I don't think so. It, unless Ukraine gives up, and they might if they if we quit, if everybody quits funding them, uh, that might be when they. Say well, they're trying as they're trying to make them give up. That's part of the plan to make them give up, right? Yeah. Um, that's what they're trying to do now. But either way, they're leftovers too. They're leftovers. It's going to be. Pastor, you know what happens? What what will eventually happen is a type of lawlessness is coming. So yeah, if anybody is. prepares for anything, in addition with, with uh, uh, some of the atmospheric conditions, right, get ready for lawlessness. I, I can tell you right now, all the power is going back to the states, and states will dictate their own destiny. And that's where we're getting back. We're going to see a breakdown of uh, most of what was held, tightly held together. They have... They have washed their hands of it, and everything yeah. on the surface is le- leftovers. It is what's ever left behind is what we're seeing. And that's why now you can interpret that picture a different way. You can see exactly what's happening when you think in those terms. Absolutely, and I do. And it, Now I see everything in a different light, a different perspective. Um, we knew, we knew, we kind of knew, but, but it's becoming more evident that uh, there's no really ca- nobody really cares about uh, you know the border. Or nobody cares about you know the Constitution. You're starting to see that. I mean, you see like mm-hmm. the the Supreme Court makes a ruling, and the and the president just says, "I'm going to do this anyway." You know, I don't. You know, it's yeah. like the Constitution don't matter. Borders don't matter. That's right. Uh, so we're moving a whole lot further down the line. Mike, there was a guy, and I, I want to bring this up in Trinidad. This guy was fine everybody said he was fine he was living with this woman for four years she had a little girl that was four years old it wasn't his child and neighbors said he was a great guy everybody said he's a really good guy all of a sudden he just snapped or something went wrong we don't know but his girlfriend said that he began become violent he become his different voices started coming out of him different personalities and voices with different total different voices and then she, uh, she was, and he got violent. And so she ran out of the house to run to the neighbors to call the police. He was out. He was destroying stuff in the house. And when the police got there, it was too late. Uh, she she left the little girl behind. When he come back, the little girl was beheaded. Um, are, it, I First mean, of many more cases. Is that going to? That's going to happen all over the world. Can you tell me why? I mean, I, that's I, going to happen everywhere it can happen because people, Pastor Paul, people have made a grave mistake. Now, for number one, a, a lot of people have played around with salvation, right? Yeah. They have entertained forces they don't understand. Mm. They have been pious in, in whatever they pursued in life, and they think that comes without consequences. This this complacency that humanity has with 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 evil, with anger, with killings, right? Uh, this is embedded in the most cultured. Video games are not passive. Video games are immersive. Uh-huh. And this is exactly the part of the personality a person has. But what a person has done was they have totally swept themselves of all beliefs. Of all what what people believe in now is everything they believe in at the moment. They have no they have no foundational belief of anything. They're swept clean, and whatever was a, was was a, was kept back for a long time. Humanity has invited them back in again. Oh, this alien topic, Pastor Paul. Yeah. When you have a lot of people going out there saying, "I want to see the lights," and they're interested in aliens, what they have truly done was open themselves up, and they're saying, "Come into me. Let me commune with you." No. Because when you when you have a desire to see the unknown, right? When it's not named. Anything can come back, and we know it's not going to be good. And so people have opened themselves up 
to totally be taken over on the inside. People were doing these... that during the eclipse. They were, well, all... you know, it's good that everybody saw those folks out there having this emotional response. Right. And you know what? That was, that was so deeply concerning and sad. And it's because people, everybody had an idea about the eclipse, right? Which is why the father's word is so important to me. Uh, well, I told you, I didn't feel anything about the eclipse at all, but these people worshiped that they, they had an emotional connection to something bigger than they were. And they were willing to accept anything at that moment. Well, uh, again, Rich, everybody's looking for Rich, a portal. I want to thank you, Rich, for uh, your faithfulness. Thank you, Rich. Go ahead, Mike. I'm everybody's sorry. looking for a portal or a gate, right? Yeah. Well, newsflash, a human being is a portal. A human being is a gate. All one has to do is open themselves up to what they cannot see in the spirit realm. And whatever wants to come will come and cohabitate with that person. A lot of people have done this. They have marked themselves for possession. They, they mark themselves for possession. They are complicit with the anger and the evil that they have inside them. There are more people right now who have bad attitudes, road rage. Do you think that's that's not normal? That's to have not road normal. Rage? You're right. The world, not... will, the world tells people, hey, you, you'll get upset and aggravated. It's okay. No, it's not okay. Because no. if you're a Christian, you believe in Christ, you are to have the peace of Christ. Yes. Christ said, I'll leave my peace with you. But people are being complicit to, to, to live without peace. Yes. They're, they're irritated, annoyed depressed they deal with all these things the lord had asked us to be healed of it and we have to ask that's something we have to accept ask for and accept he's already put it in place but you have a lot of people who have become complicit to live in a type of darkness with negativity with attitudes and everything else that is unnatural to it love really itself it is unnatural it's a it's that's, against that's unnatural the, it's against nature it's against god's uh you know people and don't you see how much stuff though is going against nature, <laughs> going against God's laws? I mean, well, uh, it, it, it's not even it's it's insane. I could go on and on and on. We got to be careful how to say it here on this channel. But there's so much going in the opposite direction when then God intended. You wouldn't believe it. God is love, right? Right. He is. That's what the Bible says. God is love. Yep. For some reason, people think love is weak. Well, I'll tell you something. It is so easy to strike back at a person. You know, right. when a person does something to you, it's easy to strike back. It's one of the hardest things in the world to take that strike and still love that person, having an understanding that that person's compromised. That's very difficult. But the power of love is this. Where a person who would hit another person, right? If they see a person in danger, they're not going to run and go get that person. A person full of love will cast everything aside. They will commit themselves and say, I'm going to go help this person out. And nothing will stop me. Mothers know this when they get that child in the middle of the night, right? After they had the flu or something. Nothing can stop that mother from getting that child. That is the strength and the resolve of love itself. And instead of people utilizing this, 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 uh, this, this power of anger or of hatred to do anything, why won't they use the resolve of love to do it? See, that's unfamiliar to them, yeah, right? Yeah. Because when they use the resolve of love, then they're willing to sacrifice. They will accomplish anything they set their hands to do if they can put themselves in the place God said, hey, you show up here. Because God placed that path of love for us. Yeah. But for some reason, people believe the lie of the world saying love is weak. It's love not. is not weak. Love's the most love powerful is, force love on the, the earth. Love is what fueled Christ to stay on the cross. Everybody else would have ran yeah, off. Absolutely. Love fueled souls. It, it certainly fueled Peter. You know, how can you be crucified? And then you say, oops, I, hang me upside down. No, you know, I know, know my arm is hanging off. Oh. I know I'm burnt to death and beat, but hang me upside down. I'm dishonoring my Lord. This Nobody does that. No. What you have to overcome Nobody does that. That takes the resolve. You got to be a hundred percent sold out to Jesus. That's right. You know, for sure. Right. You know, that, you know, that, you know, that, you know, that's right. There is no plan B. I, I, you know, that's I, right. I can tell you my life, I'm living it for Jesus. There is no plan B. No, no backup plan. When you got the I best. Have, forget the rest. <laughs> you know, Mike, when you got either. the best, forget the rest. There that's is right. no backup plan. That's right. And if you have a backup plan, you have, don't have the man. You can't have a backup plan and have the man Jesus Christ. You mm. got to trust him all the way, right? That's right. right?
That's right. A lot of these people, Pascal, they haven't. They've been they've been they've been operating under a different power and they have been loving it. And that power is just coming to get its property. And that's demonic possession all over the world. I believe that's the first of many cases wow. we're gonna see. Wow. We're gonna see that. But not one believer is gonna be touched. Amen. Because not one demon has power over the over the weakest Christian. Amen. Amen to that. Oh, one last thing before you go. <clears throat> the woolly mammoth is coming back. Did you see this where they're, 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 they're taking the DNA of the woolly mammoth and they're putting it with an elephant uh, and the Tas oh, and, I mean, a Tasmanian Pastor, tiger? What's, this, what's going to happen? Article 2008, Alaska woolly mammoth, right? Yeah. Uh, tusks yep. dated to only be 50 years old. Huh? In other words, these guys, they're doing things they have no business doing. It's been going uh, on? Here's, you're going to read about this article. Are you ready? You're going to read uh, about it. Everybody's going to hear about something in China. Right. Okay, I'm ready. China has developed some sort of a thing, right, that, that's a dragon about the size of a big lion. It's real. Okay, what? It has a, a birdish type head. I don't know if it flies, but it has wings. People are going to hear about that. Wings! It is it is black, white. It's black, white, and uh, <laughs> a tannish color, and it's real. It, it's not fake. Also, they they didn't stop there because China discovered a place that was totally isolated from from everything, kind of like Madagascar was before human beings got there, right? And the the diversity of life that was there with China has uncovered a, a cavern system, right? Kind of like in Mexico, right? That has trees. Grass. The one in Mexico has 100-foot-tall trees, right? What? This one has grass that's bigger than you are, bigger than I am. Like, can you imagine a blade of grass bigger than you and me? That's humongous. Oh, that's insane. And huge bugs, huge everything is in China. It takes, um, it takes some equipment to get down in there because the hole to access it, Right is quite tiny, and they they found this place by rescuing one of their own workers on a drill site or something, something out of a movie. But it's a real place, and people are going to know about that, and that will further bolster uh, China in, in on the world stage as being this place of wonder. Did because they people create look at this? China as a place of wonder? No, they didn't. They God, found it. it's God's place, right? Yeah, they they uh, they didn't create it; they just found it, and according to them. And according to some folks who are over here in, in prestige positions, there are extinct life forms down there. You know, nothing from outer space, everything that used to live here, but some, some big specimens down there, huge specimens. And the only word they had was, we got it totally wrong. We just got it totally wrong. Because everything down there, they said, it just kept continuing. But what we think things look like, we got that totally wrong. That's what that's what the word came back. Bugs? But but that'll be that the whole world will know about that. The whole world will know bugs about that. Bugs as big as enough. me. Well, just big bugs. Big blades of grass. As big as, as big me? as we are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can you yeah. imagine can you imagine a seven and a half foot blade of grass is seven and a half feet tall, right? Yeah. And about and about two and a half feet wide. Right, that's pretty big for a blade of grass and for a type of grass. So I'm, um, we're going to hear about this, right? I mean, you're saying this is going. Oh, the whole world's going to hear about it. Yeah, the whole world's going to hear about it. Yeah, they're going to hear about it. <sighs> okay, I'll deal with that when we get to that, Mike. It's it's enough tonight. I can't deal with them. <laughs> I can't deal with no more, Mike. I just can't. What else you want to tell me? What we're we going to talk about next week? Is there any something between now and the, the weather? Other? Weather and war. Weather and war. Yeah, we'll probably have a couple of CMEs. I mean, expect uh, solar activity to go on another. Uh, it won't be on a hiatus. It, it, it's we're going to have some more active, uh, active pulses come through, and so the sun will certainly react. Weather, war, and react. CMEs headed our way. Mike, appreciate you coming on tonight. Uh, it's really great information. It gives us a lot to pray about. It also is a lot of confirmation from the Bible uh, we learned here tonight. So praying for, the, of course, the peace of Jerusalem. We're praying that 
you know, somehow, some way, war would end. But, but look, at the end of the day, it's coming that we need Jesus, don't we? It is. Oh, Pastor, I forgot something. One, more, one last thing. Yeah. Now, everybody knows I'm talking about the water event, right? Yes, 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 yes. The bugs come out in May or early June, right? We already have two collapses uh, in the in the South and North Pole. So those collapses are going to translate into water problems around uh, May, June, and July. So, so next, keep that, we'll keep so that. next week, we'll, we, we'll, we're going to talk about weather, war, Yeah, and we'll water. talk about that more. We'll talk about that water more because um, it, it's almost like everything is melting much faster. Then, then you remember I told you about that the uh, the one ice sheet that was held up by a very small layer of ice. Yes, it is being held up now, right? It's almost totally collapsed. It's floating right now. It's floating, right? Okay. But that's only going to last for another month and a half, and, and that's the what? end of that. It's going to just it's going it's 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 broken off. It's starting it's to break, break off away. already. It's a yeah. huge it's ice already, sheet. It's already starting. Oh wait, yeah, wait, wait. it's already starting. So. Uh, that's happened. Um, I expect more breaks have happened, okay. uh, and that matter it is the once it breaks, it's going to slide down. It'll got, shift. Okay, Heidi's got something. She's brought me right now. She says, "Paul, here is here's a, a massive water disturbance deep in the southern hemisphere of Earth." Do you know about that? Yeah, line? well, we'll, we'll, we'll hit that up. We'll talk about more of that this week. They're going to try and explain that, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. All we'll, right, we'll, so next week we're going to talk we, about we'll weather, rehash, yeah. water, yeah. and war. Did they say it was causing a 40-foot wave? Is it a 40-foot foot wave? Foot, um, waves are recorded. We don't – just got this info. We haven't watched the video on the explanation, so I'll have to do that. Don't know. We have – 40-foot well, wave? Wait a minute. Wait. Where? I'm, I'm just saying, did, are, are they saying anything about a 40-foot wave? Uh, not not what I see right there. I'd have to go through okay. it and see. But, uh, no, I don't know. We'll talk about it next week. Weather, yeah, we water, we and will. war, and then throw the sun in there, and we'll see what that we'll see what shakes out. Yeah. An eighty foot wave. Someone just said. Someone said an eighty foot wave. Eighty foot. Uh, You're saying a, forty feet. Okay. Forty. Yeah, forty and very wide. Probably about the length of a continent. Forty-foot wave. That's a the tsunami. Of the that's a gigantic. That's what that's, I'm looking for. That's beyond. That's Eighty-foot would be more compact. So that's not the break I'm looking for. Okay, so you're looking for the break of the ice sheet. Yeah, yeah. Forty foot is something totally different. Um, okay. Forty foot and very expansive is something totally different. In this case, the height of it, if it, if it's eighty-five or above, that means it's much too. Uh, much too localized. We're not talking about something localized. We're talking about something with global coverage. And so, uh, you know, 40 foot wave, people can look forward to that one coming. We'll talk next week, Mike. Thank you for yeah, coming on being with we us tonight. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Fast Paul, God bless you. God bless it's always you. an honor. God bless All you, right. Mike. The honor is mine. God bless.